Hi everyone. Welcome to our What Are Royalties seminar. This is session one of five, and today we'll be going over a general overview of the topic of royalties. All of the sessions of the webinar will be available for rewatch. You will receive a link in your email afterwards, and all of the sessions will be on the same page as well as some resources. If you haven't already found the chat box, you could pull it out on the right side of your screen and you could use that to ask questions or interact with each other. And let's get started. We are your hosts. I'm Noelle. And I'm Elizabeth. We are the publishing specialists here at SongTrust. Um, I actually started off at SongTrust as an intern in January for the publishing operations department. Um, I definitely learned more in that internship that I did in any class that I took about music publishing. Um, and now I've transitioned into my role on the growth team and I focus on educating and signing up new clients, making sure that they understand all of the abilities that our platform has and how to use it. Hello, and I'm Elizabeth. I've been at Song Trust for about 19 months now. So I started the summer of 2017 in the operations department, um, helping the back end um, operate. And then I moved forward this year to the growth team, which is new. And I help consult anywhere from independent songwriters to managers to labels all over the world to understand where they are in regards to publishing and what their next steps are with publishing admin at Song Trust. Some important points that we hope you walk away really confident about when this is over um, are learning the difference between the composition and the recording. So in each song, there are two separate types of revenue and knowing the difference between the two is really important. We will also break down the difference between mechanical royalties and performance royalties. Knowing where both of those royalties come from, um, how they're earned and who collects them will be our next topic. And lastly, we will explore the timeline that the publishing industry works on and the reality of why it's such a slow moving game. All right, so let's get started. Um, music publishing, the reason why we're here, and in its purest form, it refers to the money you can make as a copyright holder of the music that you write. And that money that you earn for different uses of the music that you write that money is called the royalties. So as soon as you have an original idea and you put it in tangible form, you are the owner of a copyright. And for music, you are the writer and the publisher. And with that comes several different rights. And these rights have to do with sharing your music. And when you distribute your music out into the marketplace for performances, live performances, for sale, for download, streaming, Royalties are generated, and there are a few types of royalties that are generated, and we'll go through those in detail um, on the next slide. If you guys see the poll, um, which will ask you about your current publishing situation, it will get us to get a better idea of where everybody is at in their current publishing situation. You'll see that in the chat box and you could interact with that there. Here on this slide, we have a great diagram so you could visualize the two different types of revenue um, that, are, that exist in each song. So we have the composition and the master recording. On the composition side, um, publishers collect on these types of royalties and they're broken down into performance and mechanical royalties. Performance royalties are further broken down into the writer's share and the publisher's share, whereas mechanical royalties are only paid out to publishers. As you can see, as an individual songwriter, it's really difficult for you to collect on all of your composition royalties. And the two circles at the bottom that are filled in red are the areas where Song Trust helps individual songwriters access those royalties. For the master recording, those royalties are collected by distributors and labels, 
and is broken down into neighboring rights and master recording royalties. A good way to think about it um, for the two sides of each song are that if you are a songwriter and an artist, you are writing your music and recording it, you are owed both the composition and the recording royalties. If you're only a songwriter and you're writing music for other people to record, you would only be owed the composition, whereas the artist would be owed the recording royalties. And we'll break down the writer and publisher share as well. Are there um, different types of mechanical royalties? So there's a lot of confusion about the different types of mechanical royalties because a lot of people think that the mechanical royalties that their distributor is paying them out are enough, when the reality is there is a completely different revenue of mechanical royalties that are generated from your composition. So bottom line, the mechanical royalties that you're receiving from your distributor um, are not the end of the mechanical royalties. Got it. All right, so we're breaking up the different shares of publishing royalties. And if you're a writer and you affiliate with a society, a PRO such as ASCAP or BMI, you are registered as a rights holder of your music and therefore you're able to at least, at least collect the writer's share. Um, similarly, if you are a writer and a publisher or a publisher, you can affiliate an entity as you would a songwriter with the societies and collect your publisher share. Um, songwriters typically see their writer's share, but they may be missing their publisher's share. And it's true, you can earn both halves of your performance royalties, the writer's share and the publisher's share, um, without a publishing entity. And we'll go into that a bit further. Um, so we see your question um, of Dale about the distributor paying mechanicals on compositions. And your distributor would only be paying you composition royalties if you were opted into their publishing administration. Um, only some distributors have publishing administration opt-in services. So unless you're working with a distributor who is offering you this service and you have accepted those terms, then you would not be collecting composition mechanicals from your distributor. Okay. So a quick poll, just another quick question for you all. We'd like to know how you would best describe your writing collaboration style. Do you usually write alone, almost always with someone else, or a little mix of both? So as we just mentioned, for one song, there is often multiple writers on a song. Um, but here we have a breakdown of some typical examples um, when there's just one writer, as you see on the left side. Um, this one writer owns 100% of the song, both the publisher share and the writer share. Um, we also have an example of four writers collaborating on a song together where they have evenly split the copyright and they would each own 25% of the song. Um, both sharing ownership of the publisher and writer share. Um, so a split sheet is the agreement between the co-writers that states who will receive what share of the future royalties. We really urge everyone who is collaborating on music to complete this sheet either while you're creating the song or after, um, but definitely before the song is released. A lot of times we have a lot of our clients coming to us not knowing what split they own and finding out later that their co-writer has registered the song at 100% ownership. So using these split sheets can really avoid a lot of uncomfortable conversations and lawsuits even in the future. And we have actually created a handy packet for anyone that needs a split sheet while writing their songs. And included in the packet is a sample of how to fill it out. You should see a pop up near the chat box where you can download our split sheet packet for free. I will be using that. You should. All right, so now we're really getting into the detail of royalties and these three main types of royalties we see in the publishing world. We're beginning with performance royalties, which as it sounds, 
come from the performance of your music, which traditionally could be anywhere from a theater to a bar to a cafe. And now we have recorded music. So you could be performing on a stage or your music could be playing in the speakers of a venue and you would still be owned performance royalties. Um, radio is a bit, can be a bit of a confusing topic, but the Pandora that we're talking about here in performance royalties, this performance royalties part would be the Pandora um, paid user accounts. I know there are different types of subscriptions and that is the model that um, pays out performance royalties. As we move over to mechanical royalties, when I mean, your songs are digitally streamed, physically reproduced or downloaded, you are owed mechanical royalties for the composition. Um, and the most common way I think a lot of us consume music right now is streaming. So all of these digital uses, um, Spotify, Apple Music, these are all earning mechanical royalties for the composition. And lastly, we have micro sync royalties. And that sync part stands for synchronization. So it would be micro synchronization royalties um, and synchronization with media, usually video. So in this case, um, our example is YouTube. That's the primary source of micro sync royalties for songwriters. So Elizabeth, I see um, streaming services as a source for both performance and mechanical royalties. How does that work? That's correct. Um, so since both the composition and the recording are being used in a single stream of a song, there are two different types of revenue that are being earned. And normally a publisher would be paid the mechanical royalties. Um, but if a songwriter doesn't have a publisher, the mechanical royalties are still owed to that original owner of the composition. So we're trying to find the best system to do that and deliver those royalties to songwriters. Cool. So now we're gonna explore a little bit about where all of these royalties come from. Um, for this slide, we're only focusing on the landscape that exists in US and Canada, where we have separate societies that collect performance and mechanical royalties. For performance royalties, um, we have organizations that are called PROs, which stands for Performance Rights Organizations. In the US, we have ASCAP, BMI, and CSAC. In Canada, they have SOCAN. Um, and these performance royalties are paid out through those. For the mechanical royalties, we have societies that are called Mechanical Rights Societies. In the US, we have Harry Fox Agency, HFA, Music Reports, and MediaNet that all collect these types of royalties. Um, in Canada, they have CMRA as well as a lot of others. Um, it's very hard for an individual songwriter to be affiliated at somewhere like Harry Fox Agency when they're not working with a publisher who has reached a certain threshold. So that's why it's really important for individual songwriters to work with someone like SongTrust who can handle their publishing administration and be registering their songs at all of these societies. Um, as far as the microsync royalties, YouTube pays out royalties that are generated from the composition and the recording just as a single stream generates both of those. Um, and we have a direct agreement with YouTube where we are able to collect the composition royalties for our client songs that are in YouTube videos. Um, in session three, we will actually have our YouTube specialist come in to talk a lot more about this super confusing topic. We know a lot of people are asking questions about it and you will definitely get your answers in session three. Collective management organizations. We call them CMOs. And as we've talked about before in this presentation, we've talked about the system of royalty payout in North America, um, in the United States and in Canada. So now we're moving to a global scale. This is a global vision of how a lot of other organizations work beyond North America. Um, so instead of PROs, they're considered collective management organizations, and they actually combine the responsibilities of both performing rights management and mechanical royalties. So in other words, if you live in the UK, 
you get to go to one society, PRS, and they handle both your performing rights and your mechanical rights. So we've gone ahead and, and become so familiar and affiliated with this network globally to understand how the system works. And again, the more education you have about publishing, the better you can collect your royalties. Um, so we're always constantly learning and updating with these societies. Um, but if you are located in any of these territories, you can see that having just a PRO is not enough and having just one PRO is not enough. Um, the more places your music is registered, the better. It's really important to remember that wherever your music is streamed, wherever that physical stream happens, that respective society will be collecting the money for that stream. So that's really important um, to put into this equation. For those of you who have received publishing royalties in the past, um, probably know that it takes a very long time to receive these royalties. Um, and ideally, you know, when you release your music and it's used, you would immediately collect all of the money. But unfortunately, the publishing industry was not set up that way um, or even really to benefit the content creators at all. Um, so publishing moves so slow because the metadata in the industry is not centralized and it's not clean, it's very inconsistent. Um, so for the societies to sort through this, it's a very lengthy task and part of the reason why it takes so long um, to receive publishing royalties for the uses of your song usually takes around six to nine months. So it's important to have realistic expectations about when you will receive your payments. Um, there are also over 200 societies around the world that collect performance and mechanical royalties to give you an idea of the huge scale that we're working with. Um, and lastly, it's often just a waiting game because publishing works on a quarterly basis, as many of you know, and ultimately the songwriters, as well as us as the publisher, are at the mercy of how quickly each society can affiliate writers and register songs and release your money. Um, something else really important just to put this into perspective with the mechanical royalties you are receiving from your distributor, um, they often set expectations that are really high because they pay out royalties much quicker than the publishing industry. So it's just important to know that both of these industries move at very different paces and not to expect your royalties for about six to nine months. I just have a quick question. Um, how does SongTrust register a song? Like if I put it in on my account, like if I give you my name and, and my share of the song, um, what exactly is taking so long? So once we receive your information as a songwriter and your songs in your account, um, we then package all of that data and make sure that it gets sent to all of the societies that we are affiliated at. That way you only have to enter the information about your songs once and you could be sure that it's being accurately put into all of the societies that we're affiliated with. Um, and once we make those registrations, that's when the waiting game begins um, with the societies and it's up to them to register the songs and release the money. Um, and once that money is released, you'll see it in your song trust account. Great. Um, both, okay, so now moving into why Song Trust fits into this equation. Um, we are a global publishing administrator, so we focus solely on the registration of your works and the role collection from those registrations. We represent 150,000 songwriters, 20,000 music publishers for over 1 million copyrights. Just a quick note, if you look over in the chat box, we're providing a quick offer. Um, if you sign up, and this is an expiring discount code um, that will expire at the end of this webinar, we really encourage you to go on songcrest.com and sign up, use its discount code, and you'll be able to have an account today. Moving on a little bit, just about um, Song Trust and how we work. We're a very flexible DIY solution to make sure that you as content owners are not leaving any money on the table. Uh, 
As you can see here, it's a quick summary of our terms, but what you can take from it is that we're very flexible and we are a DIY publishing solution for independent creators. Um, it's an online platform where you control your publishing yourself on a global scale. Um, and there could be questions about this, but the last thing I'm going to highlight is we have a registration fee. It's $100 per writer. Again, there is a discount code we're providing today only. Um, and you have, if you have any other questions, we have a support team you access once you do sign up. We also are making available um, our emails towards the end for you to reach out with any other questions. But um, now will be a great time for you to use the chat box to ask any questions that you're really wondering about now. Um, but before we do that, I'm sure that you see a poll popping up in your chat box. Um, and we would just like to know who's interested in getting a demo of the SongTrust platform in the future um, to see if maybe that will be something we can get for you guys. Great. Um, I have a quick question that I kind of want to go over, just because I feel like a lot of people are seeing this as a center of revenue. Um, how does one collect royalties from Spotify? Can we go over that? Yeah, let's do it. So through one stream, we talked about how composition and recording royalties are generated. Um, you could receive those recording royalties from your distributor. Um, which could be somebody like DistroKid or CD Baby. Um, and then you could receive those royalties generated from your original compositions through a publishing administrator like SongTrust, where we would be registering your works with the mechanical societies around the world and making sure you are paid out those royalties. Uh, a common misconception about music publishing um, is that being with just ASCAP or BMI in the United States is enough. And we just want to emphasize that that is only a really small portion of the publishing puzzle. Um, and to be with just your PRO really is not enough. Um, OK, so question from the crowd. If I have a non-exclusive distribution deal and YouTube partnership, could I depend on them to collect publishing, or is that separate from distribution? Got it. So some, as Noel mentioned earlier, some distribution platforms offer publishing admin in addition to distribution. It's important to keep in mind that these are two different specializations. So you could rely on your distributor specializing in distribution of your music to the marketplace and to distribute your music to streaming platforms. And entirely complementary to that and entirely separate is publishing. So you could use a distribution platform like CD Baby, and you could also sign up for SongTrust, and then you would be covering everything for distribution and publishing. Now, if both offer YouTube services, it's the same as any other platform. Um, CD Baby, in this example, would be helping you claim the recording asset in the YouTube video, and SongTrust would be helping you um, claim the composition asset in the video. Um, if you are signed up with SongTrust, do you also need to be signed up with SoundExchange? We actually recommend our clients to also sign up with SoundExchange. Uh, SoundExchange is its own little interesting collection agency where they only collect from non-interactive streaming sites. Um, so that would be, you know, free Pandora accounts or internet radio, Sirius XM, um, and places like that where sound exchange collects from. Um, and those are technically sound recording royalties, which are not able to collect here at SongTrust since we're a publisher. So definitely go sound up, sign up with sound exchange as well. This is good. If you are publishing for other writers, would all need a SongTrust account? So what's great about the SongTrust account is it, we make it, as, it very simple to use. 
and it scales to as many writers and as many songs as you would like. Um, so I could have my own account or I could say, you know what, I'm going to handle publishing for myself and Noel, and I'm going to help register both of our songs from our account. So then I would have two songwriters and I would have songs by maybe just me solo and then songs we share as well as songs that Noel would have solo. I would be able to manage our both of our catalogs from that single account. Um, it really depends on the relationship that you have with your co-writers. Um, but if you are, if you have a publishing company with multiple songwriters signed up, um, that's a great way to manage your catalog and track each writer's individual royalty earnings as well. What if I'm registering songs with you or BMI, but don't release them on Spotify, but load them up to YouTube by myself? Do you collect royalties from YouTube? So I think there's a, like the first part of that question, um, I, I just wanna ask, would I register songs with SongTrust or BMI, and how does that work? So in adding your songs to your SongTrust account, there is no reason to have to go to your BMI account and register those songs as well. Um, SongTrust is a way for you to add your songs to one account and have them registered at all the societies we're affiliated with, which includes BMI. Um, so if you're not releasing them on Spotify, um, but you've added them to your YouTube channel, we are able to collect your royalties from YouTube. Um, that video is still using your composition and as long as it meets YouTube's requirements, which I'm sure we will go over in session three, um, then we will be able to monetize that video and collect your royalties. All right, I think we have time for one more question. So does SongTrust replace my PRO? Good point. So understanding the relationship between song trust as a mediator is very important. So traditionally, a publisher is handling songwriter and rights holder relationships with collection societies. So instead of the songwriter having to do all of this work um, or an independent publisher having to do all of this work, song trust is making the, uh, all streamlined. All of your publishing is streamlined and we handle your relationship with all the societies. So we cooperate with the societies every day and we try to improve your publishing experience every day.